It must be Tuesday night on NBA TV. We are center court. Good to have you on board. Main event of the evening, the only event of the evening that is center stage after all. Casey Stern, Grant Hill, Candace Parker, Isaiah Thomas, and even though no PG-13 working his way back, KP after missing 10, and that guy never misses any in a big spot, and Luka doesn't miss many either. Stars aligning, and early, the Don. That shot's pretty, G, and he will get it off and do it with a step back and confidence, all sorts of different ways. Okay, so he was attacking the basket early on, getting to the rim, three-point play. Trying to keep his team in the game early. Things look good and were good, and then this tough moment to watch. Guy really plays the game, Candace, hard. No contact, and immediately we knew issues, and it is an Achilles injury. Obviously wouldn't return. Looks like it's torn as well, unfortunately. Yeah, we wish wish him the best. Speedy recovery. You know, Achilles aren't, aren't easy, but no doubt he'll come back strong. All the best, obviously, to Mr. Powell. Meanwhile, you see the numbers from Second Spectrum. Kawhi struggle bus driving. Issues. Getting space, just the shot wasn't working, and Zeke with a guy like that as it was tonight, it's usually just bad news that the second half's gonna look different, and it would for Kawhi. Yeah, you know he's gonna find a way to manufacture points as he slaps Luka in the face. Get that. <laughs> Let me dunk on you with the right hand, slap you with the left hand, and that got him going. He was ready after that. Goes strong to the hole again, finishing right, laying it up. You know, strong man. I like Kawhi. All right, the slap with the right, <laughs> then with the left. What is that? You hit the A and the B together on Street Fighter Z? How did he even do that one? Now, meanwhile, lead. The fight seemed to be maybe over. It was 14 and counting, but Luca counting. The buckets, he'd end up having 34 in the game. Mm. For Zingas, easy. Zingas said, I'm strong too. Help and the little man up. I like when the big man helps the little man up. Back and forth, uh, Isaiah, not the shortest on this set. Can you tell he notices? Uh, lead 11, four minutes to go in the fourth. And it was Kawhi and Doncic and Candace. This is the kind of stuff you love, old school with two stars kind of going at it. Yeah, and obviously both of them started off rough in the first half, and they found their rhythm when the game was on the line. Uh, fourth quarter, if he hasn't already, you know Lou Williams is going to get going, G, and we saw big shots from him on one side. But on the other side, I want to ask you about Porzingis because he hits a couple of big shots closing the gap. Great to see Porzingis back, and as you said, hitting big shots for his team as they're trying to fight back in the game. He missed 10 games, right, fought the rust, then back off. And then back, uh, in other words, that's the schedule and the outlook calendar for Kawhi. It's worked out well. This is game number six in a row, 30-plus. But they're not done. Kleber and company working it. The Mavs take the lead up by one. Under three to go. Swing, swing. No shocker, but Shamit hits. And then, I mean, this is, Zeke, he's so confident in these moments, Kawhi. He, he really is, and that's where experience comes in. Uh, he's very confident, very relaxed, very poised at the end of the game. Makes very few mistakes. Speaking of which, Doncic over Harrell, ain't no thing. Step back, we talked about a pregame. Candace got it done. Lead five. Nice little pass. Finding a seam. Maxi with the easy dunk. The lead is three. They get the ball back. This all looks like it's setting up in the right manner. Because when you go the other way, look at the space, Candace, for Doncic. Besides the pass. Yeah, I think that Doncic had a nice look there. I love him being unselfish at any other point in the game. But right now, you're a franchise player. You step up and make franchise plays. And then we learned about uh, franchise plays that a lot of people uh, still have trouble making in big spots. Free throws, fundamentals people. Jermichael Green over two on one end. And then on the other end, Luka, similar lack of success. Missed the second, though, purposely. Rebound Kawhi. Grant close, and Dallas made a lot of big plays late, but at the end, they had two opportunities. One Doncic alone at three, the other at the free throw line, and not able to get it done. They give Dallas credit. They fought. They could have given up. Played well there that last four minutes, but just unable to execute down the stretch. And, of course, those free throws, L.A. gets the win. All right. Uh, speaking of uh, looking to uh, L.A. while they're in Dallas, one, Six straight games, 30-plus or more. The other, a jacket ready for Hollywood, 3-D with Kawhi. Watch. Kawhi, you get off to a slow start tonight, 3 of 14 in the first half. What went through your mind in the second half to take over this game? Uh, we was winning the basketball game by 10 or 11 points at the time. 
Uh, so I just kept playing, trusting my teammates, kept my mind on the defensive end. And speaking of that defensive end, as the Mavs were making that run, I saw you being more of a sort of effort trying to slow down Luka. Uh, yeah, you know, they did a great job uh, in the first three quarters. Um, and, you know, uh, when the coach called my number, I got to guard him the best I can. He's a hell of a player. Do you like what you see so far with this Clipper team, what you're trying to do to get, go to the next level? Uh, yeah, man, we, we, we keep building. Uh, we're trying to build, uh, you know, winning habits, and I think we're doing that. We got to just keep moving. And speaking of keep moving, when you get to your spot down the stretch, you're unstoppable when you get to the paint. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to try to get to my spots, my sweet spots, so the team can come double me, and then I get my teammates wide open shots. Well, what can you say other than uh, you're twinning indeed? It will look two stars. And it's about duos now, right? The Lakers with two, the Clippers with two. But everybody's kind of had one because of health. Porzingis back tonight, big shots late. But Doncic stars and Kawhi more than enough to don to me the greatest of honors on this evening. Moments of celebration presented by Charlon Champagne of the Players. Play Kawhi. Oh, this definitely has to be the Sherlock play moment of the game, particularly on the dunk and the slap in the face. I mean, that that is definitely a Sherlock. Bam! Moment of the game. <laughs> if you can't walk and chew gum, as long as you can dunk and slap someone in the face, you're in in good shape. Uh, look, in the face, taking punches, all those things. Again, the defense not perfect. And we were just talking about this as we're sitting there watching 3D talk, Candace. And it is, you know, we remember the huge comeback against Golden State with this group other than Kawhi and how they're always fighting. There have been times where they've almost lost and sometimes have games like this where they had them at hand in the fourth quarter. And that's the thing. Clippers finishing games. When they're behind, we know who the ball has to go to and who the play is going to be run through. It's Kawhi, it's Paul George, it's Lou Will. But when they're ahead, it just seems like they've squandered a number of leads at the end of, this year, at the end of the season. And so I think that's something that can be of concern going into the playoffs, even though you have closers, being able to finish out games. Grant, as a, a player, and perfect guy to ask, you know you could in big spots score and score a lot of times in different ways, but because you were unselfish, you had that part of the – how do you know which one to turn on and when, right? LeBron, we talk about this all the time. Dontrich had a three. Not that he didn't pass up a shot for maybe a little bit of a better one, but tough seeing him not take that three. How do you handle that and learn from that if you're Dontrich? Well, you know <laughs> – People may say that was the right play because he passed to an open guy, but time and score dictates to me whether something's right or wrong. You know, you need a big shot. Your best player needs to step up, and he's wide open. And, you know, you could say he had nine assists. Maybe he's trying to get a triple-double. Who knows? But the bottom line is the right play would have been for him to be a little bit more selfish, take that shot, shot he's hit all season, even last season, wide open. Uh, and that could have, you know, d could have been a better outcome for, for the team. So, you know. Unselfish is okay, but in that moment, you got to be a little bit more selfish. Now, even though this is the lead of our show tonight, I don't want to bury the lead. It's a big day for the Brotherhood coming up. Hey. And for the NBA, did we mention that? Wednesday night, he's here. I'm so excited. We sit here inside our studios for game time at NBA TV Center Court. A night among many where we celebrate Zeke basketball and it's always important, regardless of what day it might be or what holiday, to remember why we're allowed to be in this spot and enjoy it the way we do. And clearly, the late David Stern, which is still hard to say out loud, the commissioner, a huge part, imprint for years to come and decades still that will. Tough day, clearly. You were there as many kind of came to pay their respects and homage for celebrating in a way what he did. Take us through how difficult, yet at the same time as they see you smile, the other side of it, too. I, I, I smile because it, it, it was a difficult day, but it was a day where when you looked in Radio City Music Hall where the memorial was and you looked back and you saw everybody who came to really pay their respects, uh, you, you understood the type of person he was. And, you know, when, when Marcellus put it the best when he said that, um, you know, David Stern was seen sometimes as a mercenary but really he was a missionary and when you looked out at the audience you saw all the good work that he had done and how he used sports uh, not only to make the game global but also to bring cultures and everyone together so it was it was a beautiful day of remembrance yeah i'm glad you brought that up because even though he and he was a marketing genius in the things that have gone on since 
a lot of it was because of not just acceptance, but embracing. And there's a difference, right? Yeah. Everybody different and how that enabled us to see greatness we wouldn't have found if he didn't have that kind of a vision, Z. Yeah, and, and, and Adam Silver, you know, when, when he spoke, he, he talked about how David always made them face the challenges and, and not only face it, but uh, combat it and, and, and meet it head on. Uh, and, you know, Adam, you know, described him in a lot of ways, uh, you know, compassionate, uh, gentle, saw things that you never would, you know, equate with, with David Stern during that time. But then also he, he talked about him being tough when he needed to be. And uh, again, it, it was just a, it was a beautiful remembrance of uh, a great man, powerful man, and a giant and a legend in all sport. His convictions and his care, both equally. Big reasons the NBA flourishing from now and into the future as we remember and celebrate the life and the impact of David Stern. More coming up on NBA TV.